Hi, Paul here. I'm a technical director. I was using Firefox, but unfortunately I've switched to Google Chrome. For more reviews like this, check the link below. So you're looking at Google Chrome and you're looking at Firefox. They are basically the same thing with a couple of differences. The business solutions that are solved by both of them are slightly different. With Firefox, you can do a lot more development, you can do a lot more customization, you can do a lot more playing around with the browser. With Google Chrome, on the other hand, you are looking at specifically, this is what Google Chrome has given you. Here's the pretty picture in your background, you can maybe change the colors and things like that. But in terms of customization, you don't really have the options that, that you might have with Firefox. In terms of business requirements though, Google Chrome might be required by your business because of how prevalent Google Chrome is in the workspace. Its websites are developed for it and everything like that. Firefox, on the other hand, is more about, how would I say this, more about the users being actually taken care of. So if you're looking at Google Chrome, Google Chrome is one of those things that, I don't know, 80% of the world is currently using. And with that, Chrome extensions are being developed it's primarily for Chrome now. And it's, Firefox is kind of falling by the wayside. The fortunate thing about Firefox is there are a lot of extensions and extra functionality that have been developed over the years that has allowed Firefox to keep that customization ability, which is actually more exciting for some people, especially developers that are not looking to have Chrome. So I've alluded to the fact that Firefox is for developers, but why? Well, you've got, if you're a website developer, you've got tools in there that allow you to play around with your websites, to see why your CSS is failing, to see why things are not working properly. But in the old days of, of doing website development, you would have to do Firefox and Chrome and Internet Explorer and Edge, and that kind of is still there. So you're still looking for that kind of variety to make sure that your websites look good on all of them. The thing that you need to know about Firefox though is that it was basically developed to run better on Linux or Linux. Um, but because it's on all the different platforms, Mac, Linux, and Windows, it allows you to actually have a seamless transition between all the different platforms. The problem with Firefox though is that the mobile client is still just a wrapper on iOS for the built-in Safari browser. So it's, it's not as seamless as Chrome on Android, um, but it depends on what your needs are. So you're looking to get started with either Google Chrome or Firefox. Easy, go to the website, Google it, Bing it, and you'll find both of them. The thing that you might be concerned about is what about my passwords that I've saved in Chrome? What about my passwords that I've saved in Firefox? How do I switch between the two? Both of them allow you to import and export things like bookmarks and passwords very, very simply. So if you are worried about stuff like that, don't be. So as a technical director and someone who works in IT a lot, there's a couple of things I look for when I'm choosing a browser. One, is it fast? Is it secure? Is it private? Does it send information back to the creators of the browser? So is the telemetry there? Now, Firefox kind of hides their telemetry, so you do have to go searching through the settings to actually play around with that. Google does put their telemetry quite easy to sort of like switch that off there. In terms of Mozilla though, who are the people who make Firefox, because they are getting their non-profit, they're getting most of their money from Google to have it as a search engine or as a homepage, Firefox and Mozilla, I wouldn't class as completely transparent. They are sending data back to Google and someone like Google who makes Google Chrome obviously makes money from adverts. So cookies and telemetry is all sent back to Google so that they can keep on sending you adverts and make sure that you are buying that latest thing because you looked at it once and now you're going to have adverts for the next couple of months.